Good morning, fellow privateers. Good afternoon for you U.S. followers. We had a time change, which I wasn't even aware of until last night. Um, so right now, the New York, UK, or yeah, New York, London Delta is only four hours. I believe that's for the next two weeks. So, you know, it's not bad for us in the U.S. Um, if we need to get up in the middle of the night for any European or U.K. economic data. Anyhow, um, I hope everyone had a nice weekend. Uh, we're just kind of getting things going here. Let's take a quick look at the top news this weekend. I think you can see this here. Another plane crash for these Boeing 737s. This one in Ethiopia. Uh, China pushes against U.S. trade demands and enforcement. In the Wan. Uh, not seeing much of a reaction in like Aussie or Kiwi. Um, you know, the opening prints here. I'm just looking now. Everything seems to be pretty much unchanged. I think cable could might be about 15 points lower from the close. Um, Powell, Fed colleagues stress March pause and strategy rethink. There's a Brexit. UK cabinet urges Tories to back May's deal, which is this week. Um, so nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, China's top trade and monetary policy officials this week and delivered a subtle pushback against trade demands made by Washington. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep an eye out for that. To see if there's any um, any negative headlines coming out of uh, this China-U.S. trade negotiations. The Trump advisor was still optimistic about trade deal with China. Blah blah blah. China's room for reserve ratio cuts is limited. A PBOC official says. Uh, Hong Kong defended their currency a bit. Um, we talked about the plane crash. We, what else? Well, we had the U.S. payroll data. Obviously, it was 20,000 versus 180,000 expected, so that was weak. Sent the dollar a little bit lower on Friday. Um, ECB's merch says persistence of slowdown is still unclear. Uh, and overall, the data flow, um, we, you know, we had a lot of data points last week, and, and we saw broad weakness across um, across the world, really. So still still kind of leaning that direction, still playing for, you know, global slowdown. Um, and we'll get into some currencies, and then we'll look at the equities and bonds. Um, so why don't we take a look here at the... Euro dollar. So I've got the weekly charts up here just to take a look. I mean, this is obviously a big down, big red candle. We did bounce from some pretty good support. I don't have the FIBO here, but I'll show it to you. Take a look at this low here back in 17, up to the highs. I believe that was 18. Uh, yeah, FIB of 18. You can see where we held. We had a nice little bounce here, 111.85, 85.90. You know, closed up at 112.37, so it's holding for now. I wouldn't necessarily say that we're we've broken out yet, but I think if we start getting below this two-thirds fibo, you know, you start looking at this one. You know, people are calling for 110, 109.50 in the euro. The dollar index, uh, we can see here, we've got these multiple, and these are some fractals up here. 9763, 9763, 9767, uh, or what was that high? 70. So we've got, you know, these are all 9770 highs, aren't they? Yeah. So this is a pr pretty significant level. Until we really start getting over 9770, 9780, um, I'm just, we're, we're playing this, you know, range trade for the dollar. Um, you know, overall, the dollar had a, it had a good week, mainly because of the euro weakness after the ECB announced on uh, on Thursday. Uh, we talked about the weak NFP, but you know, we think it's kind of a one-off. We're still growing 200, 
thousand plus jobs over the past 18 months. Um, let's move over to Australian dollar. We had some weak data out of Australia. This 70, the figure area, a low last week was I believe 03. 70 figure looks like a big, big spot for us. Um, this bar obviously was only about a you know 10 minute move. So um, if we get start getting under 70 cents where there were a lot of options related buying on Friday. Uh, it opens up 69, even 68 over the next few weeks. Um, Dollar CAD took a bit of a hit, um, had a good week, but if we look at the daily, they had a strong jobs number uh, coupled with the week US NFP, and we had a bearish engulfing day. Uh, we still like buying dips in that. Um, let's take a look and see. Fibo. I'd like to see if we can get like a, you know, maybe a th third pullback that would get you down kind of 133 figure, 15, somewhere down there. I think it's a good spot to buy. You know, we're miles away from that right now. Uh, well, 100 points, I guess not miles away. Uh, so that's dollar CAD. Cable, here's another, um, hit some critical support and, uh, on Friday, and let me see if I can get you this thing. What does that swing? It's a big, big fib swing. I believe it's from probably this low here up to the high. No, it's not that one. Um, anyhow, this the well, the 200-day moving average is right around here at 129.95, and there's a couple fib um, confluence of fib supports as well in this area so this is pretty big we've got um thir uh, what is it wednesday tuesday wednesday the 13th 14th uh we've got parliament voting on may's deal on tuesday and then a no brexit deal on wednesday which would also extend article 50 so we might get you know, if this area down here can hold, um, market seems to be getting a little bit short, and I could see it a squeeze higher in the British pound and, and you know some of the sterling crosses. Let's take a look at euro sterling while we're on this right now, and we eighty six forty seven was where we closed. So that, uh, we did have an inside week, which is interesting. You know, we got a, a big tail the week before. Um, I'll be looking to play kind of a break of either side of this. Uh, well, I should say this week. I'll be looking to play the break of either side of this uh, of last week's range, which was 86.54 and 85.36. So we'll pay attention to that. <coughs> um, dollar yen came under some selling pressure. Uh, you know, we were long this. We were long this via some uh, one touches on the top side. Uh, we've got another week left leading up to the BOJ, but now we've had three pretty bearish looking cal candles. Um, you know, it looks like it's, you know, trying to retrace some of this this uh, dollar up move. Um, but we're going to stick with this and hope that the Bank of Japan surprises or there's, you know, something comes out this week. Um, the dollar EM was under a little bit of pressure. Dollar Turkey actually was, was I think that was down a little bit and you know, kind of yeah, just down a touch, um, actually close to a close to a bearish and golfing day, I believe. Let me see what this. Yeah, that was for four twenty or five forty two forty five. Yeah, we almost we almost had the bearish and golfing day on Friday. Again, that was just uh, you know broad dollar weakness. Dollar index was down about a point two five percent. Um, we talked about the BOJ, that's Thursday night, my time, um, Friday morning, Asia. And uh, I think that, that, you know, with this this big dovish tilt that we've seen across all central banks, most recently from the ECB and Draghi last week, um, I can't imagine they're going to be anything but dovish. And it actually would be nice if they announced something because Bank of Japan meetings have been complete duds for a uh, a number of months. 
Uh, let's pop over to the equities because there were some interesting weekly candles on the S&P. Go back to the weekly. Very big bearish engulfing coming off of real good resistance. 28.20 were these, you know, this is 28, uh, 28.18 high. This is a 28.14 high. So this area up here, you know, you, get, you could call this, I guess, a, a triple top, really. Actually, we have another one here. You know, somewhere right around this 28 figure to 30 area is, is uh, looks quite important. Um, we did close the week uh, off the lows. We got down to 28.22 on the, after the NFP number. It was a quick, quick sell-off and then bounced. And then there was, I tweeted this I, on Friday, that there was just a big ramp in the last, uh, let's just go to like a real short, here's a 15 minute chart you can see in the last hour of the day. Uh, we, you know, we went from 27.35 up to 27.53. Who knows what that was all about, but um, it's it's been tough. We're short, we delta hedge some stuff. We got some 27 puts um, that expire in a week, I believe it's, yeah, this Friday. Um, but the weekly, there is no doubt that this is a very ugly, bearish, engulfing, and with everything else going on, the, and the, the moves in the 10-year the yields this past week, um, they dropped 12 basis points from 275 to 263. That's a huge move. That's like a 4.5% move. Um, so the bond market seems to be paying attention to you know some of the global slowdown story that we saw with a lot of the data this week. And the, the, uh, you know, the, st the, the stock market is, you know, was in line with that until that late day ramp. But uh, you take a look at the NASDAQ, same type of deal. We, I thought we got the bearish engulfing. Uh, the low was 7048 here and the close is 7058. So not, not quite, but you can see another big wick here um, but we're looking to sell rallies after you see weekly charts like like this um, you know that was that's the uh, FTSE which is kind of in the size of week here's the DAX you know pretty big red candle and the Nikkei had a bearish engulfing and that is lending you know to some of the weakness that we saw in cross yen uh, and dollar yen in particular on Friday so it still has a bit of a risk off feel to things, even with that, that late rally in equities um, on Friday. But uh, you know, here's the 10 year US 10 year yield. You can see we had we made a new high up at 277 ish and you know, pretty close to a bearish engulfing um, of the previous week's range. Is that a daily? No, it's a weekly, yes. Okay. Um, what else are we looking at here? Precious metals, kind of uneventful. Let's take a look at the charts. We had a little nice little hammer here in gold. That's you know from the dollar weakness, and there's silver. You know, and gold and silver have both been you know smashed the past the, the week prior. So a little bit of a relief rally in, in precious metals. Um, I think the key you know this week is to really be paying close attention to the. Uh, Pay close attention to the bond market because that, that seems to be telling us that uh, they're concerned about global growth. They're looking for more risk off. Um, you know, we're supposed to be uh, selling rallies in risk, so it'd be in S and P's and Nasdaq and oil, and selling rallies in things like Aussie yen. Um, sterling is you know it's home of my animal. Um, one other thing the, this evening in uh, seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Powell and Yellen are going to be on the infamous 60 Minutes. Um, let's double check. I believe that that is coming out. Let's see here. It'll be Yellen, Bernanke, and Powell. 60 Minutes message to stress Fed independence and in efforts to support the average American. This could be interesting. I can't wait to see some of Trump's tweets after uh, um, after this 60 Minutes because you know he's been cheerleading the uh, the stock market higher. He was saying, you know, if we can get this 
China trade deal done, the stock market's going to go parabolic and explode higher, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I think that this could be a good good way to kind of temper some of his enthusiasm when you have three of the most, you know, the, the current uh, Fed chief and two of the previous in Yellen and Bernanke um, talking about how important it is for the Fed and the FOMC to be treated as an, as an independent um, party. And, you know, you can't have a president bashing the current head of the largest central, the most important central bank in the world. Um, so this could get interesting. This is in a few hours' time. Um, what else? Week ahead, we talked about the parliament vote. You know, we do have some data. We got the U.S. retail sales. It's a quieter data week than it was last um, so, you know, not as exciting. Volatility is still very low. Um, the dollar is still in a range. You know, we're trying to be nimble. We're trying to find trades that are going to work anywhere from, you know, a few hours to uh, a, a day before the, the theme changes. So it's a very tactic, tactical environment that we're in right now. So anyhow, you'll hear from us on the European Open and uh, have a great week ahead. And if anything develops intra-week, you'll hear from me again. All the best, and good luck trading. Cheers.